obviously you're moving forward. I feel the trajectory. I feel you leaning into this message that I feel like you're finally allowed to say. Yeah. But it started with an apology. Mm -hmm. what, what were you apologizing for? Because I read it and it's beautiful. It's sculpted and it's just, it's really a great piece of writing. But what, what, what are you apologizing for? Help me understand that. For everything and, and, and nothing. I mean, there are parts of the apology that are a non-apology, mm. you know, and that, those are being highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, I can't apologize for my life. I can't apologize for um, the amazing things that, that God's done in my life. Mm -hmm. I can't apologize for what I believe. Yeah. Um, I, I can't apologize for the fact that Exodus has helped people yeah. or that it did help me. And yet, in my apology, I felt it had to be unequivocal. Um, yeah. It had to be without reservation, without guile, right. without the big butt um, yeah. of Christianity. Right. It had to be very, very clear whether this was my message, mm. whether this was my um, counseling session or right. prayer session or whatever that right. I was involved in, whether this was a part of my time at Exodus or not, right. I am the leader of this ministry right. and I must sit down and own this. Right. And there were people who decided they would own it with me. Mm. Uh, but we have to say to the people who were hurt, and there were people yeah. who were hurt by our message, by techniques, by people who did uh, unspeakable things in the name of Jesus and in the name of, of leaders and, and right. authority figures. And we had to say, we're sorry, yeah. specifically. We're sorry you experienced this. We're sorry that this caused you shame. We're sorry that this hurt you. Um, we're sorry that in the name of Jesus, um, in our desire to do good, right. we didn't do good in your situation. Got it. Um, so it's, it's apologizing for some of the, the methods and techniques that Exodus used to, to move a point. Yeah, and, and even broader than that. You know, and I think it's... it's it's beyond Exodus. It's, it's us as believers. Right. Um, we're sorry for how we've treated you as Christians right. with regards to this. When your feelings didn't change, uh, that we made you feel less than, mm -hmm. that we made you feel like you should feel something that we could never promise you would mm -hmm. feel, um, that, that we doubted your relationship with Jesus, right. that we made you doubt your relationship with Jesus. I mean, there's an infinite number of things um, that, that I felt like we had to, to say we were sorry for. It's so much of the, the uproar around the apology is, are you apologizing for, your, for a theological stance on homosexuality? Are you basically, are you saying on behalf of Exodus, homosexuality is not a sin, or you're apologizing for the methodology that you went about caring for people? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the basis of it is, obviously, like I said, the, I can't apologize for what I believe is very clear mm -hmm. um, regarding God's creative intent for human sexuality. I okay. cannot apologize for okay. that. Therefore, when it comes to sexual expression mm -hmm. with members of the same sex or the mm -hmm. opposite sex, right. um, I, I cannot apologize for what we believe about that. Okay. And yet, how we have wielded that sword mm -hmm. um, has caused damage. Mm -hmm. um, how we have impacted people with that message um, we have been careless. Uh, and I think that that's a church thing, but certainly an Exodus thing. And yeah. as the leader of Exodus, I had to say unequivocally, we're sorry. Right. Um, I can't doubt. You know, and, and, and even, you know, there were other parts of, of the apology. You know, and people have taken, um, taken issue with this, you know, the issue of gay parenting. Mm -hmm. you know, there are gay and lesbian people out there who are parents. Mm -hmm. And there are bad gay parents. But there are bad straight parents, too. Mm -hmm. There are bad Christian parents. There are bad Republican parents. There are bad Democrat parents. There are bad atheist parents. There, there's no shortage of bad parents out there. But to say a parent is bad because they're gay or lesbian, mm -hmm. I'm sorry that we said that, and we did. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, Florida is the only state in our union mm -hmm. that doesn't allow gay adoption. We support single adoption. Mm -hmm. We support non-Christian adoption. Mm -hmm. We support 
other faith mm -hmm. adoption. We support all sorts of things that as Christians, we might say, oh, we wish every child would grow up in a home with a mom and a dad. And that's mm -hmm. beyond Christian. Um, or in a home that, that believes as we do about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's not our option. We have 5,000 kids in the foster care system in Florida alone. Mm -hmm. They need parents. I know what it, I know personal stories of people who have grown up in the horrors that is foster care. Mm -hmm. Not all, but many. Mm -hmm. And we're unwilling to allow those kids to have homes mm -hmm. with parents who may not live like we want to live, mm -hmm. but who will provide a good home for them. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do with the gay and lesbian people who already have kids? Take mm. them away? Mm. You know, there are people arguing with me all day long about, um, about those things. You know, you know how I treat uh, murderers and rapists and homosexuals. And I think, well, your message is inconsistent. You know, are we supposed to send gay people to jail? Right. You know, are we supposed to... Yeah. And I just, I, I don't think we've thought through this as, mm. as Christians. Mm. Um, so there are, you, what am I apologizing for? Yeah. Oh, a lot. Mm. And, and, I, and I hope my desire was not to run this through a PR firm. Right. No, no PR person wrote this mm. for me. I wrote it. Um, many of my leaders saw it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a, a gay friend um, who helped me. He's a, a writer. Um, he helped me hone in on some things that would cause gay and lesbian people trouble. Mm. Um, I had some Christian friends look at it, um, knowing that I was unwilling to change things that would cause Christians to feel a lot better about it, right. obviously. Right. Um, and then my wife and I um, looked at it together, and she said, not you're doing the right thing, but we're doing the right thing. Mm. And this hopefully will provide an example for the church. I hope the church will stand up, I hope pastors will stand up in their pulpit and, and do something unbelievable mm. and say, we're sorry. God loves you as much as he loves me. Mm. He wants a relationship with you as much as he wants a relationship with me. Mm. And I hope that will change everything. But the difficult part for a pastor is that they're also called to stand up there and uphold a standard. Even pastors that you love that have affected your life can't yeah. uphold the standard that they preach, but that doesn't mean we're not supposed to preach. I get that. So how, how do they live in that dichotomy with upholding a standard that, that I mean, I, I've, I haven't heard you say anything that makes it indicate that you feel that homosexuality, um, we don't use the word sin, but is outside of the best you design. You can use the word sin, right, I mean, but we why, all sin. Right, yeah. but, but it's outside of some yeah. original design. How does a pastor, what is the role of the church, and lead, the pastor leading a church, getting up there and, and holding both of those things in tension? Mm -hmm. Live your faith, share your life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the motto we live under. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what I believe, watch me. Yeah. Watch me live my life. Mm -hmm. Jesus did this perfectly. You, if you want to know what he believes, watch, watch how he lived his life, who he surrounded himself with, mm -hmm. who he argued with most. Right. You know, People say, well, you're gray, you're confusing. Jesus confused me. <laughs> he confuses mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And yet he was so clear. Mm -hmm. um, I don't doubt his message. You know, what's a pastor to do? You know, I think in the church we've led with, this is what we're against. Mm -hmm. We've led with, this is a sin. We've led with the big but of right. Christianity. Yes, but. Right. And we've not led with, Christ died for all of us or he died for none of us. Right. Jesus loves you, period. Right. Everyone can have a relationship with him. Yeah. We all fall short. Right. Um, you're absolutely welcome here. It's not to say we never stand in our pulpits and have this conversation, but I right. think we have this conversation with tears. Hmm. I think we have this conversation with great caution and care. Mm -hmm. Man... I'll never forget watching Tony Campolo, who people would say, well, of course you're going to cite Tony Campolo, but Tony and, mm. Tony and I have different beliefs. Mm. Um, I'll never forget watching Tony Campolo stand before a group of gay and lesbian people mm -hmm. at a gay and lesbian event, and he was asked the question about marriage. Mm -hmm. What do you believe about marriage? And he said, with tears, and you could tell it was 
very, very painful for him, very emotional for him to say to a group of people mm -hmm. that he loves dearly, I believe what the Bible says about marriage. Mm -hmm. And they received it. They may not have liked it, mm -hmm. but they received it because he did so with such care and with such emotion that they couldn't help but believe he was on their side. Thank you.